Thing after dark, already in the ring for the featherweight title fight, title holder Fred Norwood of St. Louis, Missouri, and the challenger Juan Manuel Marquez of Mexico City. And Larry Merchant, let's have a closer look at Freddie Norwood. Norwood confirmed his reputation as an unstable character outside of the ring when he failed to make his weight and was stripped of the title in Tokyo just a year ago. He recaptured the title last spring in a fight in which he absorbed so many low blows that he was in a wheelchair for four days. But he comes from a proud tradition of St. Louis champions, including the great Henry Armstrong, Archie Moore, and Michael Spinks. Meanwhile, across the ring, Juan Manuel Marquez has been ranked the number one contender by the governing organization which sees Prince Nassim Ahmed as champion for two years and hasn't been able to get the prince into the ring. What else on the closer look, Larry? A rarity. He was disqualified in his first fight, learning about the politics of the game immediately when he discovered that the doctor who recommended the disqualification had a piece of the other fighter. Since then, he's been ducked by Hamed with the sanctioning bodies shamelessly helping Hamed avoid him. And to fill in the spaces between fights and between some of the shameless stuff that goes on in boxing, he's used his talent for numbers to be an accountant for the Mexican government. So maybe he can help Harold Letterman total up his score at the end of the night. But give us the rules first, Harold. <laughs> okay, the Freddie Norwood, one man will mark his fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. And Jim, we had a tremendous controversy at the rules meeting. Freddie Norwood's trainer, Kenny Adams, claimed that he watched eight tapes of eight different one man will mark his fights. He said that Marquez punched low in each of the eight fights and and he implored the WBA to have Joe Cortez, the referee tonight, take away points uh, if Marquez does punch low. Jim. All right, Harold. Uh, first, let's look at the tail of the tape for the fight between Fred Norwood and Juan Manuel Marquez. You'll see the three-year age advantage for Marquez, two-inch height advantage for the Mexican fighter. Norwood with the reach advantage, however, and they both weighed in at or a pound under the limit. Tonight, Marquez weighs a couple pounds more. And Harold has already given you the rules, but because I messed up the traffic, you will now look at the graphic with all of those rules, reconfirming everything Harold told you. And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino of Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight Bob Arum's top rank incorporated in association with your undisputed undefeated king of beers Budweiser this buds for you present a world championship boxing doubleheader before we continue we'd like to dedicate tonight's card of boxing to the memory of a lady pioneer in professional boxing rest in peace Eva Shane tonight's bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and your three judges assigned to this bout scoring it on the 10 point must system are Stanley Cristadulo Art Ellenson and Dwayne Ford. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, working for the 120th time in a world title belt, Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and gold and weighing in at 125 pounds. An outstanding professional record. 29 victories, including 22 knockouts with only one loss. And he is ranked number one in the world by the WBO. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger de Ciudad de Mexico, Juan Manuel. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing trim gold, weighing in. His professional record also an outstanding one. 35 bouts without a loss, 34 victories, 20 knockouts, and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, from St. Louis, Missouri, presenting the reigning and defending undefeated WBA featherweight champion of the world, Freddie.
game, Marquez and Norwood. We won all the rules in the dressing room. Ya tú la regla de Camerino. I expect a good clean fight. Que no pelea limpia. Give me good sportsmanlike conduct. Your trunks are a little high here. I won't call these low. Give me a good clean fight. Protect yourself at all time. Remember, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Check him out. Marquez has never fought anyone in Norwich's class, so we can't be sure how he will deal with his uh, speed. On the other hand, Norwood may never have fought anybody with the punching power of Marquez. Good matchup. And like all fights in the 126-pound weight class, this one takes place in the shadow of Prince Nassim Hamed's unique worldwide marketability. Hamed and his people have already made clear what they think of Marquez by asking the governing body repeatedly not to make them fight him. Freddie Norwood, for his part, says that he doesn't hold any great hope of getting into the ring with Hamed either. But let's see if one of them can make a statement here. Power puncher like Marquez, good combination puncher, more dominant with the left hand, has to find his way, Roy, against a southpaw like Norwood. Yeah, but Norwood is not trying to let him find his way. Norwood is coming out trying to put the pressure on early so that he doesn't get a chance to find his way. Norwood telling us that he felt he could get to Marquez's body and disrupt the Mexican's normal attacking move. Marquez fans in the crowd chanting Marquez, Marquez. And the Norwood crowd picks up the opposite chant. Marquez has fought his last 22 fights in California and Nevada, so he's not a stranger around here. Both fighters getting to the body early. Left hook to the body there by Marquez after Norwood has dug twice to the body with his left hand. No one has to be very careful with these wide punches because Manuel Marquez has a very tight offense. Meaning that he throws good straight punches and if he catches Norwood while he's wide, he's gonna catch him, beat him to the punch almost every time. So Marquez will be looking for punching opportunities right up the middle. That's right. Tactical first round. You can almost put yourself inside Juan Manuel Marquez's head and feel the patience as he looks for an opportunity. The uppercut landed. Norwood unfazed, continues to press the action coming forward. Norwood missing with a wide swinging left cross. Straight right hand. Often a steady part of the conventional fighter's offense against a southpaw. Marquez fainting with the left to try to set up the right. And Norwood not finding many opportunities to be aggressive in the last minute of round number one. And as we go to Manuel Marquez's corner where they'll speak Spanish, our interpreter is Ray Torres. Okay, you, you, you need to put, to put the foot out there. You got to throw a lot of hard blows. Jab, jab, and then little by little, you'll be getting in there. He, he's very confident, but uh, he, he doesn't know what he's going to get into. See, it's like a little puzzle going on there. Right? So whoever, whoever wills to put earliest, that's the one that's going to get it, okay? Keep your composure, keep your block period, and get it, okay? You may, you may have noticed that on the front of Norwood's trunks, he calls himself Lil Hagler. Like Hagler, left-handed, bald, and uh, trying to make an impression late in his career. 
Sanchez stepping forward and reaching with the right hand. Interesting CompuBox observation. Total of 61 punches thrown by the two fighters in the first round. Neither fighter landed a jab. They were 0 for 30 in jabs. Freddie Norwood in particular doing a good job of blocking Marquez with his gloves. I think they were both out here trying to get some respect from one another in that first round. Left hand shot by Norwood inside. And Marquez goes down on his back. Second time in his career, Marquez has been knocked down. Darrell Pinckney did so as well. Now let's see if Norwood can follow up. Marquez got buzzed on the way in. He looks all right from here. And Norwood can't get overconfident here. But Marquez is still a dangerous puncher. And Marquez now has a taste, though, of Norwood's inside strength. The two punches didn't travel much distance, but they landed flush. And that's the respect that Norwood was looking to gain. Hard left hand again by Norwood. So Freddy's landed three big left crosses in the round. And Marquez is looking to get back aggressively rather than simply to recover. Marquez clearly of the mentality, okay, you hurt me and made me pay, now I want to turn the tables on you. Yeah, but Norwood has the respect right now. That's one thing he wanted to gain right away. When you take a big puncher, you make him respect your puncher power, and you take half his pain away. And he's landing his left hand with regularity. Cortez was prepared by Norwood's corner to look for low blows, and you saw Norwood turn and look at Cortez after Marquez threw the right hand below the belt. Yeah, because he wants to stop it before it gets to be a problem. Didn't look like that bad of a shot to me. No, but Cortez was right there with the response, so obviously they've done the right job of coaching. And if you have a guy with a reputation for low blows, you want to stop him before he gets going. Making an issue early. Especially if you've been put in a wheelchair from low blows. He's not in a wheelchair tonight. Big second round for Freddie Norwood comes to a close. You gotta cut the ring out on him. You gotta get him to work the body. Don't go back, go forward. How do you feel? Looking to do some business himself. Marquez walks right into that left hand. And Norwood seemed to be waiting for him, Roy, as though he was setting a trap. Oh, second, yep. let's go. Oh, second, let's go. Come on. Well, Marquez holds that right hand just low enough that it isn't an effective guard, right? <laughs> no, it's not. Plus, he was coming straight down the pipe then. He came right down the line of Norwood's power punch. By CompuBox estimation in the second round, Freddie Norwood landed 10 of 15 power shots. So he was painting Marquez with the left hand in round number two. And you heard Marquez's trainer, Nacho Beristain, say, don't go backward, go forward. Not easy to do when the fighter across the ring from you has already gained the kind of respect Norwood has gained. Yeah, and I think Norwood wants to keep him going back. Well, this will be the sign of what kind of fighter Marquez is. He got knocked down. Can he adjust? Will he keep coming? Some people see that kind of scenario as uh, one that De La Hoya wants to try next. We get uh, Trinidad's respect early in the fight so that he can manage him somehow. There you go. Right now, Manuel Marquez is coming forward, but he's doing it a lot more tentatively than he was early in the fight. He's coming forward, but he's reaching when he gets into punching range, and he hasn't been able to land anything authoritative on Freddie Norwood in this second round. Norwood is simply going side to side, 
hoping that that will help to nullify Marquez's straight-on power and taking advantage of his own power punching opportunities when he gets them. Marquez misses, misses with the right hand. Norwood fires back to the body. becomes a war of nerves as Marquez, Marquez gingerly tries to go forward and Norwood tries to punish him when he does. Norwood is trying to keep him out of this fight, which is more for him. There's a right hand that lands for Marquez. Could be a little confidence builder for him. Quick left hook inside by Marquez as Norwood stuck his head forward and leaned in. Actually, I think they both landed a punch there, Chip. Marquez starting to get a chance to do a little bit more damage with his left hand. The left hook is his strongest punch. Right hand lands again for Marquez. Doubling up with the right hand. And Norwood starting to drop his hands just a little bit. So in the last minute of round three, Marquez mounts a little bit of a comeback. Take the jab. You got him stepping back with his right foot. He's wide legged. He's looking to get off on the right hand. Okay. He's not going to get much off on it because it's all the way back. Oh, he's got an arm punch on it. Okay. Uh -huh. So you're going to catch it and come right back with the hook, back with the left hand, drop the shots to the body. They're there, Freddie. Okay. Don't get out of range. You're getting out of range too much, okay? Round, back, faint, step around, give him a move, see what he does, okay? How you feeling? Okay, everything's in range. Make, make sure that you lively there. He, he throws round him first. Bob and weave and, and get in there. You've got him already. Kenny Adams, Norwood trainer, makes an interesting point, Roy, that the way the, the geometry of the fight is between them, that those short punches, you, straight punches you talked about, that Marquez throws have become long punches, arm punches. I don't think they're really arm punches. The outstanding Kenny Adams, U.S. Army Airborne veteran. You've seen him in the past with Kennedy McKinney and Vince Phillips and a variety of amateur fighters in his uh, amateur training and coaching days with the U.S. Army. Freddie Norwood's last fight, a stinker against Antonio Tremino in uh, Puerto Rico, in which he won a split decision to regain his title. He was trained by Miguel Diaz, the only fight he's fought in his pro career without Adams, and he said that it really threw him off to be without Cannon. And Stinker is putting it mildly. They had a fumigate the place after that fight. Clash of heads. Leaves Norwood with a headache and a cut over the left eye, or no? Dr. Flip Pomansky taking a look, so maybe there is a cut. Yep, cut on the head, buddy, says. Ah, there it is. Okay. Accidental headbutt. Accidental headbutt. You hear the referee, Joe Cortez, calling it an accidental headbutt. What does that mean, Harold? accidental head but before the fourth round if the fight gets stopped it's a technical draw if the fight gets stopped after the fourth round meeting in the fifth we go to the scorecards whoever's ahead on the scorecards wins but you know Marquez can't win on a technical knockout because of that cut if, if the cut eye is what causes the technical knockout if a butt causes a cut correct in other words, if the fight stops because of that cut, we go to the scorecards in later rounds beyond the fourth. So now Marquez with a new target to intrigue him. At 
after the clash of heads produced the cut over Norwood's left eye, his following eye, not his lead eye. And Larry, you asking about those arm punches? That's what. That's what. That's another problem that this causes. We have two uh, opposite side fighters fighting. They often run together and hit, but it's because they come right towards one another when they try to advance. So by staying on the outside of those long punches, it was keeping Norwood from getting hit. But now he was told to take more risk and try to counter, and we see what happens. Very nice counter right there by Marquez. Marquez in the last two rounds, the third and fourth, showing the quickness to counter effectively. Norwood, who's been fighting at a slow pace, averaging only 26 punches per round the first three rounds, starts to liven up a little bit here in round four and landed one more left hand moments ago. He sure is showing a lot of respect for Marquez, Roy, for somebody who has gotten the only knockdown in the fight. Well, also, those, those arm punches must be harder than they seem like. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's got heavy arms. No, he's doing good arm punches. These are not arm punches. They just look like arm punches. So the fighting again. Juan Manuel Marquez trying to solve the puzzle of Freddie Norwood through four. You're okay, you're okay, no more. It's okay. No more. But you don't don't get close enough to get your hands. Here's that clash of heads. Ugh. Hurts me watching it. And it sure hurt it hurt Norwood. All right, second out. When a southpaw faces a conventional fighter, sometimes the jab goes out the window. And indeed, the two fighters have combined to land only six of 109 attempted jabs in the first four rounds by CompuBox observation. And despite having been knocked down in the second round, Juan Manuel Marquez, as you saw, has taken the lead on the Harold Letterman scorecard through four. I have it an even fight because I called the first round even two point round for Norwood, the other two rounds to Marquez. And these are very difficult rounds to judge. Everything they throw have knockout intentions on it, I believe. Yeah, it doesn't look like either fighter is in there trying to hunt and peck and win a decision. That's why you don't see him landing many jabs. Straight left hand lands for Norwood again, right up the middle. Marquez dropping his right hand just enough to make his face an available target. fight between Brunel Whitaker and Oscar De La Hoya. Discordant styles, the smaller southpaw moving around the ring, the bigger conventional fighter looking to land power punches and not finding many opportunities. And the rounds hard to score, just as they were in that fight. Trinidad has joined us at ringside here live in Las Vegas. We'll be talking to Trinidad 
here at ringside, and Oscar De La Hoya via satellite from his training camp in Big Bear between fights. You are kind. Did my best. But there's plenty to wait for as the evening continues. As we mentioned, Oscar De La Hoya live via satellite from his training camp in Big Bear, California, smiling and having a good evening so far. And we'll be talking with Oscar and with next Saturday night's opponent, Felix Trinidad, between fights. Main event yet to come tonight. 130-pound title defense for Floyd Mayweather Jr. There's Trinidad accepting the good wishes of many fans here at ringside. Felix came into town a few days ago after training for most of the period leading up to the big fight in Puerto Rico. One of the amazing things about that fight is they've already revealed who the judges are, which can only lead to trouble. <laughs> Or free food. <laughs> no, of course, none of them would accept anything like that. Harold, how do you have it through five? You know, Jim, I always go for the guy that that, that throws the punches. I tell you something. In the second round, Freddie Norwood did land that you know two good left hands dropped one man, Manuel Marquez. You have to give him a 10-8 round for that round. But personally, I thought that's the only round he won. I think one Manuel Marquez is one Manuel Marquez is throwing more punches, more effective clean punches. He's the effective aggressor, and he constantly gets in those right hands, which score points. I have it 48-46, one Manuel. Marquez. Very nicely done, Harold, and good on the Marquez. And uh, CompuBox agreeing with you that Marquez throws more punches, though neither fighter is putting up much of an offensive output. Norwood only threw 27 punches again in round number five. There he lands a left hand over the top. Marquez not throwing as many as he'd like to, but throwing more than Norwood. It seems as though Norwood only wants to land the overhand left or the straight left. Those are the only punches he really wants to land. I think that knockdown may have prompted him to believe he could knock this kid out. Marquez getting in a right hand of the body. Didn't look low, but Norwood looks over to Cortez, and Cortez says keep him up. I thought it was a clean body shot. I thought it was well above the belt line. You know, when we saw Norwood fight, Tamino in San Juan, a fight that we didn't show on television. Thank God. I thought it was one of the ugliest things I'd ever seen. Uh, I thought the other guy was responsible. But I'm beginning to believe that uh, Norwood has something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we've just hit a rough patch in the road. You weren't terribly thrilled with our card two weeks ago, uh, were you? I guess I can't wait for the 18th. <laughs> Maybe that's, that's coloring my judgment. Yeah, that's what the problem may be for all of us. Floyd Mayweather may put on a show for us a little later tonight. <laughs> Meanwhile, the action here heats up a little more as Norwood begins to become more aggressive in round six. At least he's looking for more opportunities to land that big left cross. Yeah, I think he got caught with a straight right hand that woke him up just a minute ago. Cutman Cassius Green has so far controlled the flow of blood from above Norwood's left eye. In fact, there is no flow of blood. <laughs> Low contact. Flag football. <laughs> Flag boxing? <laughs> You gotta throw some combinations. I'll say. And if you if you throw more punches and come on in, you, you'll even up the fight. You, you, you'll win, but you need to throw more punches. He's throwing a lot of headbutts and uh, getting hit with the headbutts. 
porque si sigues especulando todo If you still if you're going to speculate if you're going to be like that you're going to lose it you got to bob and we to throw punches There we go water down Juan Manuel Marquez telling trainer Nacho Berstein that he's concerned about headbutts. Norwood's the one who's already been cut from an accidental headbutt. And Berstein, to the delight of boxing fans everywhere, said ignore that and go fight. Maybe the trainers ought to get in there and fight. <laughs> They both want to see a fight. Seven of a scheduled 12. Let's go. And Le Bay in Las Vegas. That's why Marquez is worried about headbutts. Clean right hand by Marquez. Brings huge excitement from the crowd. Something they haven't seen enough of. Something we haven't seen enough of. Both fighters reluctant even to use the jab. Freddie Norwood trying to fire left crosses sparingly and land them. Marquez waiting for rare opportunities to try to throw combinations. Here comes the Norwood chant again. And there's a good, solid left cross to the forehead of Marquez. I believe Chris Hame would be at home very upset with himself right now. Because we're not oh. having fought one of these two guys? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't see the one of them giving him too hard of a time. But you never can tell. I guess styles make fights. Yeah, and part of the problem, of course, is that Naz's marketability around the world is such that he can make big money for fighting Mickey Mouse. So he's not eager, or so it seems, to go out and match against the best for the moment. Well, but he says he wants to unify the titles. He's, he's fighting one of the title holders, Soto, uh, October 22nd. Toughest opponent in a while. And theoretically, he would fight the winner of this fight as well. case he won't have to put up with any more abuse for his choice of opponents. Is there any way Joe Cortez could get the decision here tonight? Joe Cortez could win the punch that award. <laughs> Yet another low contact round. exactly what Howard Cosell have had to say about this. November 1, it's the next edition of HBO's award-winning documentary series, Sports of the 20th Century. Howard Cosell telling it like it is. Tune in for a revealing look at the sportscaster who revolutionized his industry. Cosell's tell it like it is persona. Frequently imitated, it says here, never duplicated. Follow Howard's career from his days as an aspiring lawyer to his days as the most famous sports broadcaster in history. Howard Cosell. Coming to HBO, November 1. Your hand would have to draw a hook. Double round. You have to come back with something. Watch <laughs> my face. Draw my eyes. Draw my eye with your eyes. Relax, relax, relax. <laughs> ready, ready, ready. We're moving around. Right, second second. Checking and baking it, but we're not doing the things we worked on. I do not envy the judges in this one. Okay, watch your heads inside, guys. Watch your heads. Well, through round seven, CompuBox numbers have Freddie Norwood landing 44 of 175 punches and Juan Manuel Marquez landing 48 of 243 punches. You can see that Harold Letterman has it even through eight. That's about each fighter landing an average of about six or seven punches a round. That's right. They're landing 15 punches per round combined. Well, actually, no. 
They're landing 13. more like 13 punches per round combined. You're I right. Don't, I don't know if my heart can stand it. <laughs> oh, you've made it this far, Larry. Oh. <laughs> Keep them up. Keep them up. Let's go. I have a hunch you can get through five more rounds. for a little while. And another hard left cross. And the third one was a glancing blow. But Freddie Norwood goes back to the action that gave him a knockdown in round two, landing two straight hard left crosses. If he could keep that up, I think he'd have a much more interesting fight. just feel he's doing enough to win the fight by landing the occasional left cross and that's enough for him. Well, he is the champion. Yep. Again. As again, Marquez, oh, Marquez drops Marquez his is right. Hurt. Marquez is hurt bad by the left hand there. His legs are still a little wobbly. Marquez comes back, throws the right hand. Norwood tries to make him pay with another left. I guess these guys didn't like the fight for the first seven rounds either. A left hand drop. That Will not be called a knockdown. That was a knockdown. I thought it was a clean knockdown. Absolutely right. With Norwood his... landed the left. Marquez countered over it with the right hand. Put Norwood's knee on the canvas. Cortez didn't call it. Yeah, that was a knockdown. It was a short left hand. It was so short that the referee apparently didn't see it. So in what be, could be critical to the scoring of a seemingly close fight, Juan Manuel Marquez, to our eyes, scores a knockdown in the eighth round and does not get credit for it. We'll be checking our replay to see if we can confirm our view of things. Do you have replay in boxing yet? Yeah, we have We have a replay. <laughs> no, no come on. Hey, Fred, keep the hands oh, okay. Don't drop the hands. When you're getting close, you're dropping the hands too much, okay, baby? You with me? You're dropping the hands sometime, okay? You got to keep the hands up when you're shaking and baking. Stutter step and swell step around, okay? Here it is. There it was, a left hand, a clean left hand. Now, I don't, his gloves touch the canvas. Hopefully, we'll get another quick look at it. If his gloves touch the canvas, Seconds out. He's traded punches. Well, that makes, that makes it more ambiguous from that angle. But nevertheless, just as Larry had told you, it was the short left hand landed inside by Marquez that appeared to put Norwood's left knee on the canvas. Cortez ruled it a slip. And by copy box numbers in that round, Marquez threw twice as many punches as Norwood. But Norwood landed the bigger ones. Meanwhile, Letterman gave the round to Marquez. Harold? <laughs> well, Jim, let me tell you something. I certainly thought that Freddie Norwood went down. But, you know, you have to go with the referee. The referee said no knockdown. You can't call it 10-8. There's no question. But certainly, I think it was the telling punch of the round. I gave the round to Juan Manuel Marquez. Very, very close. I have it 76, 75. And in actual rounds, five rounds to three Marquez. But the point system is what we go by. So Juan Manuel Marquez by one point because they thought he won the eighth round. I don't think it's out of the question that some of the judges would have a better memory for Norwood's two big left hands early in the round. I don't think so either. I don't know what to think. <laughs> so it may not be a great fight, but it does appear to be a close fight coming into these last four rounds. Freddie Norwood's featherweight title on the line. Juan Manuel Marquez with a 29-fight winning streak coming in. 
and Norwood has never been beaten. 34-0 and 1. With all the problems that Norwood has had outside of the ring, amazingly, during his 10-year career, he's remained unbeaten. Maybe the first time Marquez has effectively blocked Norwood's left cross with his right hand. Break, 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 oh, hard, hard, come here. When I say a break, I want you guys to break clean. I don't think they're going to put any off break. I can't let Let's go, let's go, let's go. Norwood showing good defense here with the head movement. Hey, 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 hey. No knockdown, no knockdown. Hey, come on. Up for the league, all right? Let's go. Keep okay, fight, guys. Oh, let go, let go, clean, let go. Let's go. Right hand body shot landed from Marquez. Marquez does get credit for his knockdown. And that puts Norwood in serious jeopardy of losing his title. Freddie, keep your hands up. Don't, don't, don't lose your clues, okay? okay? Get smart. Keep your hands up. Keep them up high, all right? It's round 10 coming up. All right, let's be smart, okay? How you feel? I know you do. Look, be smart, okay? Listen to Freddie, listen to me again. There's that knockdown at the end of the round, which may turn the decision in this fight around. A quick flash knockdown. That's what the left hand even landed. Yeah, but that's what it landed. That's where those straight punches come in. Well, I tell you, when Noah was throwing the looping punches, bam, bam, straight punches are going to get to the target quicker. You know, the orders that Norwood got from the corner were to be smart. I think he's got to be aggressive. I got I think he's got to make stuff happen here, Roy. Yeah, he does, because he's definitely behind now. Roy, both fighters are headhunting, and that's one of the things that contributes to the low output here. Neither man has mounted any sustained attack to the body. Who do you find fault with for that? Well, uh, both of them are, are trying to be punches here, so you can not expect much body punches from them. Their corner should have warned them early, but, you know, this is a profession. You also have to know what you're doing yourself. <laughs> Two knockdowns in the bout. Marquez was down in the second. Norwood was down in the ninth. Norwood's knee touched the canvas in the eighth on what appeared to us to be a knockdown. It was very close. It was very quick. Joe Cortez called it a slip. Probably a variety of other referees could have made the same ruling. It's not always easy in there. who got to the ribcage with a left hand. Norwood with another round in which he fires a couple of punches here and there, but does a lot of posing. So he looks for one opportunity to try to go for the knockout. That's what's bad about getting an early knockdown in a fight. I saw Ray Mercer do that against Larry Holmes. You're saying there's a tendency to let up and just look for that one shot again. Yes, it is. You see heavyweights do it all the time. You don't expect to see it that often from featherweights. 
But these are two featherweights who fought with a heavyweight mentality. <laughs> they are still fighting with a heavy, heavyweight mentality. They are. seem to be a big problem. The big problem he has now is Marquez. Okay, the, the fight is even now, but if you don't throw punches, he might win it. But but we, we got, we, we're gonna win and we... You gotta throw blows. Let your hands go. Guys, I want to clean round. I want to clean round. I think you have the fight, but it's slim. But you got to keep throwing punches. If not, we're not going to win. Snap on him. Just pop him, okay? Right from, right from your shoulder. You understand what I'm saying? Turn on the ball of the foot just a little bit. Keep your hands up. Keep the hands up. Take some water down. Take some water down. All right, Mike Tyson ringside. Tyson and some of his friends known to be friendly here in Las Vegas with Floyd Mayweather Jr. who will be defending his 130-pound championship in the next fight. Mike saying hello to Roy Jones Jr. across the ring even as we speak. Tyson with a fight coming up later on this year against Orlan Norris. There's a hard left hand by Norwood and another slippage. The title is slipping away as well from Norwood, it appears. Although one could make an argument that Marquez hasn't done enough to take his title. I don't know if the judges will take that argument. I'm glad I'm not a judge in this one. One never knows. One does take note of another hard left cross by Norwood. They've been few and far between. But when they've landed, they've been showing. There was a jab. You're kidding. <laughs> a landed jab? Yeah, a clean landed jab. Amazing. Break, break out, break out, Tane. Norway throws one or two punches and wants to clinch. Can't win that way. But I guess it's worked for 10 years, so why would he change <laughs> now? You're right there. Marquez reaching low to get in a right hand to the body. And then stepping away as Noah would look for another chance to fire that left hand. Locks Marquez with the left hand on the right side of the head as Juan Manuel charges forward looking for chances to land. Rowe will follow up with the right hook after he throws that kind of left, he'd be better off. Just talking about. And Marquez stepped right into it, but took the punch pretty well. I think he may have led to his own pretty well. Too. Marquez trying to make it a fight. And as he stumbles away from that exchange, Joe Cortez grabbed Freddie Norwood to keep Norwood from attacking Marquez when Marquez was in an unfortunate position. What was that all about? I'm not sure. 
Don't despair, but keep after him. Make sure, watch out for that uh, punch that he's gotten, and then go after him. You gotta be a... Hold on, relax, relax. Well, it's been, for the most part, a surprisingly dreadful fight. Freddie Norwood, through 11 rounds, has averaged 24 or 25 punches around. He's landed just enough left crosses to probably give himself the right to believe that he could be winning the fight. Juan Manuel Marquez has scratched for opportunities to land in return and has thrown a lot more punches, but hasn't landed that many more. And Harold, how do you have it through 11? Jim, I'll still go with the busier guy. 105, 102, seven rounds to, f seven rounds to four. One, Manuel Marquez. I think that Marquez is just doing more, and I don't think Norwood's doing enough. No right hands at all from Norwood the whole fight. For God's sake, he's hardly throwing any punches. At least Mar Marquez is taking a fight to him, trying to fight, making a fight, and throwing punches. I think Marquez deserves it on aggressiveness. I can't, Larry? I can't disagree with you, Harold. I have it 6-4 and 1, but I guess somebody else could give me an argument why Norwich should retain his title because Marquez didn't do enough. And Norwood did land the bigger punches. Indeed, and in fact, while I'm not sure I believe this should be the decision, I'd probably go for Marquez also. Let me be the first to say I'm in no way surprised if Norwood gets this decision and retains his title. In terms of the future, Marquez might be a more entertaining fighter if he had an opponent who would stand there and fight him. He's been a very entertaining fighter in many of his appearances in the forum in Los Angeles over the course of the past seven years. But there he was lighting guys up with spectacular knockouts. They weren't edgy, dodgy southpaws like Freddie Norwood. Yeah, Freddie Norwood's job is not to make Marquez look good either. And he's managed that. I don't know how good he's made himself look in the process, though. Right? Looks as though it was a secondary goal. Hard left hand by Norwood as Marquez reached in, looking for an opportunity to land. Another low contact round. Another clash of heads. Norwood is good at, at making his opponents miss, but he just doesn't make them pay often enough for it. No, he doesn't. Tackle. Leg tackle. Fascinating to see how three judges choose to score this one. I agree with the crowd, though. Whatever the judges say, the crowd has the final judgment on this fight. Well, it was a, a very impressive fight by neither fighter to me. I don't think either one of them was busy enough, but that's why they have judges. I don't sit here and keep up with who won what round, so hopefully next time they both will look a lot better than they did tonight. All right, let's see who our judge gave the last round to. 
Okay, Jim, I gave the last round to Mar one mil one Manuel Marquez. I have it eight rounds to four, 115, 111. I just thought that Juan was too aggressive in the 12th round. I thought he won the 12th round. I thought Freddie Norwood just didn't throw enough punches once again. As a matter of fact, I didn't think Freddie Norwood threw enough punches the entire fight. I just like Juan Manuel Marquez's aggressiveness. He tried to fight. He tried to make the fight. Norwood, I don't know. To me, he just backed up too much and waited too long. Now, here's the more interesting version of the 12-round battle you just sat through. As we give you now edited highlights, believe it or not, of Juan Manuel Marquez against Freddie Norwood in round number two. Double left hand by Norwood, down goes Marquez. In round number four, a thrilling headbutt, which produced an exciting cut over Norwood's left eye. In round number eight, the big mystery of the fight. Freddie Norwood's knee goes to the canvas. Was it a knockdown? And in round number nine, the real knockdown for Juan Manuel Marquez, as Norwood definitely goes down after a two-punch combination. So that's just part of what the judges had to ponder and conjure with. And let's go to Michael Buffer and see what they had to say. We go to the Budweiser scorecards. Dwayne Ford scores the belt 114 to 112. Arthur Allenson scores at 117 to 112. And Stanley Chris Dedulo has it 115 to 111 for the winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated champion, Freddie Little Hammond Norwood. So Freddie Norwood retains his title. A decision that does not overwhelmingly surprise this reporter. Final punch stat numbers in the fight. And you can see how many landed punches there were. We're hoping that you'll see more landed punches than that in four rounds of Trinidad de la Hoya next week. And total jabs. It certainly was not an effective jab fest. Marquez putting his left hand out there 219 times and 200 times finding air. Norwood, nine out of 151. Definitely a fight in no way worthy of a post-fight interview. So let's go on to bigger business. As I am joined now live at ringside by one of the two combatants in next week's big extravaganza here at the Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino, this is interpreter Ray Torres, and Ray will be interpreting the answers of Felix Tito Trinidad as we get ready to talk to Tito live, and also live with Oscar De La Hoya, who's gonna join us in a moment from his training camp in Big Bear, California. Ask Felix, this is a much bigger fight in terms of buildup, publicity, expectation than any of his previous fights. How has it been different for him? Esta va a ser, esta es una pelea que tú vas a tener, que es la ma, pelea más grande de tu vida. Es una pelea que tú no has estado en una pelea de esta magnitud. ¿Cómo es, ha sido diferente el tiempo para ti? Sé, sé que va a ser una, una, una pelea bien grande, pero yo he tenido peleas muy grandes también. I know this is a big fight, but I've also had big fights, so I'm ready. No different for him. Now, he has spent time with Oscar De La Hoya at publicity functions getting ready for the fight. Watching Oscar in person, has he learned anything interesting about his opponent that he didn't know about him before? Ha pasado mucho tiempo con Oscar en la conferencia de prensa y en las promociones. ¿Aprendido tú algo esto de Oscar que tú no sabías antes? Bueno, que yo aprendí, pues, la que tuve una oportunidad, una oportunidad de estar en, en el tour que tuve con Oscar, pero... Pues nada más, somos dos, dos, dos campeones y, y le, voy, le voy a demostrar que en septiembre 18 soy el, el mejor campeón y el mejor libra por libra del mundo. No, no, really. I haven't learned too much uh, differently than that I didn't know before. We're both two great champions, and on the 18th, I'm going to show, show him who the true champion is. 
Espera, por favor, una más pregunta en momento. Right now, let's turn our attention to Big Bear, California, where Oscar De La Hoya is going to join us live from his training camp there. And Oscar, welcome aboard. Uh, thanks very much for being with us. No fight of this magnitude, Oscar, would be the same without the earth-shaking rumor that precedes the fight. And this week's rumor of the millennium, particularly on the East Coast, is that you hurt your left hand in training. Did you hurt it? No, not at all. I, uh, there's no rumors that should be going on whatsoever. I feel great. Everything's perfect, and uh, we're going to show it September 18th. All right, let me ask you the same question I asked Tito. You've spent time now with Felix Trinidad in preparation for the fight at publicity functions and traveling with him and things like that. Have you learned anything new about Tito that you didn't know before from watching him in person? Yeah, that he talks too much. Talks too much for your taste. Talks too much about you and the fight? That's right. All right. So tell us this, uh, Oscar, what are you going to do about that next Saturday night? <laughs> well, I've always said my fists are going to do the talking, that's all. I mean, September 18, it's going to be a, a, a very good fight. You know, we're both prepared and we're going to give the fans a good showing. He doesn't speak English. You do speak Spanish. Have you had any private conversations with Felix Trinidad that only you and he know about? No, not at all. Um, I, I remember just uh, seeing him a few years back, but... Uh, nothing out of the ordinary we've just been we had our little uh, press tour and well, that's about it but we didn't have no conversation whatsoever all right so what you learn about trinidad you'll learn for the most part next saturday night thank you oscar for your time we'll see you when you come to town for the fight one final question for you felix um as you get ready for this one you come to town much earlier than de la Hoya. do you think being here several days in advance will be an advantage for you Tú llegaste a esta ciudad estos varios días antes que de la olla. ¿Tú crees que estando aquí mucho tiempo antes que él es una ventaja para ti? Bueno, yo tengo mi, todo mi entrenamiento hecho, de verdad que viene con un día anticipado porque, de verdad, eh, siempre tenemos, lo tenemos acostumbrado. Uh, all my preparation is final, John. We came here because that's what we usually do. Get to the place where we're going to fight a couple of days early. Nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. Quisiera decir algo más. Septiembre 18 voy a ser campeón del Consejo Mundial de Boxeo y a Oscar de la Hoya. ¿no? Le puedo decir que yo voy a ganar y él sabe que yo voy a ganar esta pelea. Sea como sea. I'm going to say one more thing to Oscar de la Hoya. On September 18th, I am going to take the WBC title from him. I will be champion. Y él entiende muy, él, él, él entiende muy bien el español y no me quiso hablar español a mí. And, and Oscar understands Spanish real well, and he didn't want, want to speak with me in Spanish. Oscar was not listening to that last part, incidentally, so whatever you want to say to him next, you can say it next week. Muchas gracias, buena suerte, y uh, hasta próxima semana. So that fight will take place, as we've told you, live here on TVKO Pay-Per-View, September 18, next Saturday night, from here at the Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. And we hope you'll be joining TVKO for that fight telecast. Still to come tonight here at the Mandalay Bay, and we hope better boxing entertainment than what we just saw as Floyd Mayweather Jr. on the left defends his 130-pound world championship against Felix Trinidad's countryman and former amateur teammate Carlos Arena of Puerto Rico on the right. Right now, let's look ahead to some other upcoming sports telecasts here on HBO. Later this month, World Championship Boxing returns with Shane Mosley, the lightweight champion moving up 12 pounds for his debut as a 147-pounder, a welterweight. So how will Sugar Shane fight with the extra weight? We'll find out first against veteran Wilfredo Rivera in a 10-round non-title fight. In October, look for the return of the dancing prince, Nassim Hamed, live from Detroit's Joe Louis Arena. The featherweight champion with the knockout punch takes on Cesar Soto in a unification bout. Also that night, undefeated 122-pound title holder Eric Morales fights former champion Wayne McCullough. Also next Thursday, check out the latest Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. Among the stories, a look at the Jets' Bill Parcells, an old-school coach in a modern age. We'll analyze why he's so successful at motivating players and show you what makes a Bill Parcells kind of guy. Also, you'll hear why Hall of Famer Joe Morgan feels baseball isn't doing enough to promote minorities to positions of authority. Real Sports where nothing is out of bounds. Well, Larry, it's my privilege to tell you that the Norwood Marquez fight is over, and as I suspected, Norwood got the decision and retained his title. Now let's hope for something better as we get ready for Floyd Mayweather Jr. against Carlos Arena. Back when 